Hi everyone, I'm, I'm Ross Sellen, uh, and I want us to all be a student of water for the next couple of minutes. Uh, I know I'm the last person between standing with you, between you and food and beer, so we're going to make it quick. <laughs> um, so when I started looking at what the future of water quality would look, look like in an era of climate change, I really wanted to say where are we at and where are we going? And when we look at where we've been, I always thought the quote, from a, from a California court case in 1909 reflect, reflected California really well. We are just vagrant drops of water, all kind of moving towards the line of least resistance. And so when we talk about where California water quality governance, management, enforcement is going to go, I think it's important to know that on the third day of Gavin Newsom's administration, he didn't tell his administration where they were going. They told him to show up, wear work clothes, and they showed up, they jumped on a bus, and they drove to the Central Valley and they had a meeting with farm worker communities all about safe, clean drinking water, which in the Central Valley is sometimes hard to come by. So really what we're really looking at is how do we ensure clean drinking water, clean groundwater in an era of climate change? And I want you all to imagine dropping one little drop of mercury into an Olympic sized bathtub, right? That would be okay to drink, wouldn't be much of a challenge. But if you, challenge, if you think about it in a world of climate change, we're making that olympic size swimming pool really more like a bathtub. And all of a sudden, that one drop of mercury, a little more toxic. And so when we're, as water availability is a little harder, and as subsidence happens in places like California Central Valley, where the ground literally shrinks, we're going to be in a situation where we need better data to make better decisions for better outcomes on public health and clean drinking water. And so when I started looking at this issue from a legal perspective, from a law student perspective, it was really the idea of what laws are in place to help us and how can we use new technologies and new, new knowledge to get to goal. And, I, and one of the things when I looked up and I said, well, if the problem is a lack of trust between farmers and growers and the regulators, what's going on? And I looked and I saw that in places like Wyoming, they had criminalized citizen science. They had criminalized data. And so really to protect against the waves of change, of political change, really shouldn't we be talking about moving governance and data management away from government? And that's why I really think that things like blockchain technology and emerging technologies that are coming out of the, coming out of the, smart, the smart growth technology network, they, throw, they throw have a lot of possibilities because the goal is have a way to verify good data to ensure that water quality staying, staying importantly safe and clean for those who have the least amount of ability to advocate for themselves and truly be in a community space where we can all move to forward towards it and create the right governance structure for a 21st century.